does Social Security need saving? Providing for retirees throughout the 21st century. By Dimitri Papadimitriou and L. Randall Ray. Policy Recommendations Our analysis leads us to conclude that the OASDI portion of Social Security does not face a financial crisis. We believe that the trustees have been overly cautious in their intermediate long-range forecast, but even on the basis of these assumptions, we find no reason to suppose that a financial crisis looms in the future. There is also no crisis regarding the burden on future workers of providing the real goods and services that will be required by the elderly. Even with a rising number of the retired relative to the working population, the trustees project that real wages of future workers will be much higher than those enjoyed today, in spite of assumed low growth rates of real output. Further, we see no compelling argument that changes in OASDI policy made today could ameliorate any problems that might be encountered long into the future. It is probable that tax rates will have to be increased in the future, perhaps even before 2020. However, the increases will be relatively small. After 2030, perhaps 2% 2 more of GDP will have to be devoted to OASDI beneficiaries than is now devoted. While not insignificant, this is surely feasible without causing an undue burden on future workers. Thus, we are encouraged to make the following recommendations. Number 1. OASDI should gradually be returned to a pay-as-you-go system. We find no reason to suppose that accumulating large balances in the trust funds is a proper way to provide for future retirees. Thus, payroll tax rates should be reduced over the next few years and then increased as required in the future. This would allow today's workers to retain more income, but would not in any way reduce the nation's ability to care for tomorrow's retirees. Number 2. Discussion should begin about the proper tax base to use to generate revenue for OASDI. Given demographic changes which will reduce the working population relative to OASDI beneficiaries, a broader base is preferred. This is particularly important given that covered payroll is expected to fall significantly relative to GDP. Discussion should include the possible elimination of the contribution base or at least of adjustments to this base to ensure that a constant percent of payroll falls below the base. Inclusion of fringe benefits in the taxable base might also be pursued. Number 3. The trust funds should be capped at no more than 100% of expenditures, an amount generally thought to be sufficient to see the programs through back-to-back -back recessions. We would actually prefer to cap the trust funds at a much lower figure, since a reserve of 8-9% to is sufficient to meet liquidity needs and funding from the general budget could be provided in severe recessions as necessary. Because the trust funds are already well over 200% of expenditures, this means that deficits, that deficits can be run over the next several years until the funds fall to 100% of annual spending. Number 4. General fiscal policy should be biased to encourage faster growth, greater employment, and higher labor force participation. For example, as the nation moves to negative natural population growth, we may wish to increase significantly the numbers of legal immigrants to ensure a growing labor force. Or, we may wish to increase substantially public investment in human capital and infrastructure to increase productive capacity. Such initiatives are in the realm of general fiscal policy and clearly lie outside the role and function of the Social Security system. But while benefiting the whole society, they would also increase the financial and real outlook for OASDI. Number 5. The trustees should abandon the use of long-range forecasts 
of actuarial balance. Attempting to make such forecasts results from a flawed understanding of the way in which society provides future benefits. The retirees, the trustees, should report actuarial balance for no more than a five-year period. For the long range, it is sufficient to report projections of annual program income, outgo, and balance. Number six, major changes such as partial or complete privatization, reduction of benefits, and extension of retirement age have no place in the reform of OASDI programs. These, too, result from a flawed view of the operation of the programs and the extent and nature of a Social Security crisis.